Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the brain for GCSE science and what we have on the screen is what's called a cross section of the brain showing three very important parts. A cross section is just the brain as it might look if it was sliced in half. So this is a cross section. And the first part we're going to look at is the cerebral cortex. Now, if you were to imagine an image of the brain, this is the part you would probably think of. It's the outer layer and it's the wrinkled part that you would probably think of if you imagined or saw a picture of the brain in a book. Now, this contains many billions of neurons. Here are some neurons on the screen here. They're actually more densely packed than they are in this image, but that's roughly what they look like. And they are joined together with many, many connections and that allows the brain to carry out all its complex functions. Examples of these complex functions include consciousness, vision, language, memories and more, but this is the higher level thinking that the cerebral hemispheres carry out. The next part is the medulla oblongata. This controls involuntary actions, things like breathing, the beating of the heart and some reflexes. One example of a reflex would be that of vomiting. So that's the medulla oblongata. Next is the cerebellum. That's the green region there. This coordinates movement, balance to keep you upright, fine muscle control. Example of fine muscle control would be that of tying shoelaces or, or writing or things like that where small muscles work together to achieve a task. So we have the cerebellum, we have the medulla oblongata, we have cerebral hemispheres there are two of those we've just shown one and these are the functions we can do a quick test at the end of the video just to see if you can remember these so it might be worth just pausing here and just looking over those for a minute uh, before moving on so the next thing we want to look at is the idea of studying the brain now we've got a couple of methods listed in the middle of the uh, page there however we just need to consider the issues with studying the brain and the first one is that it's difficult to study the brain directly because one, it's very complex. It is very complex in the way it works. And it is very delicate. It can be very easily damaged. So that makes it difficult. The other thing is it's also protected by the skull. And the skull, as you know, is quite thick bone around it. However, there are ways of studying the brain. One is to use something called CT scanning. And this is a method by which we use x-rays. And these x-rays are fired at the brain and we get a series of images that are a bit like slices of the brain. A person would uh, be lying down and they would have a circular device which would fire x-rays at the head and give images in slices. So what I mean by that is the x-rays produce images that look a bit like this on the right hand side. So these are a couple of images taken using CT scanning. And one of the potential uses is if you look on these scans there you can see that there's some uh, whiter areas and these are denser areas than other parts of the brain. So these may indicate an issue in the brain, for example the presence of a tumour. So this is one use of CT scanning. We also have something called PET scanning as well. So let's just highlight our PET scanning. And this is when radioactive glucose is used, is given in a drink to the patient, and the more active areas in the brain give off more radiation. This means that the radiation that's given off has to be detected by a scanner. And the other advantage of this is it gives us color. So different areas of the brain show different color. So you can see how active different parts of the brain are based on what a person might be doing. So active areas as are shown as or shown by uh, different colors. So for example, while a person is doing different tasks, we could see which areas are more active than others. And this gives us an idea of which part of the brain does which function. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is the idea of treating brain damage, treating brain disease and spinal injuries. The first one we're going to look at is the idea of spinal injuries. And spinal injuries are when we have injuries of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is really important because it carries impulses from the brain and to the brain, to the rest of the body, and it is required for communication with the body. The problem is it's very delicate and 
Not only is it very delicate, but it's protected by the spine. So it's protected by the spine, so that makes it difficult to get to. And of course, the spine is made of bone, so that of course makes it trickier to get to the spinal cord. It's probably worth mentioning here, actually, that stem cell research, stem cell research often targets spinal cord injuries. This is a learning link to another topic in biology, but this is one of the uses of stem cell research. A second issue is that of brain tumors. Now, these can be treated by chemotherapy, but the first thing to look at here is the idea of the difficulty of treating brain tumors. And this is difficult because by surgery, they are difficult to reach. Tumors are difficult to reach and it's very risky. For example, if other parts of the brain were damaged while the surgery was happening, it makes it very risky. But we can use something called chemotherapy, which uses drugs which are given directly into the blood. And these can travel to the brain and help uh, with any luck to destroy a tumor. We can also have treatment by radiotherapy. And this is when we use gamma rays to target tumor cells. And if we concentrate the gamma rays or the gamma radiation on tumor cells, then there's a good chance we can reduce the tumor and possibly cure a patient that may have a brain tumor. So here we are at the end, the little test that we said that we were gonna do, the cerebral hemisphere, the cerebellum, and the medulla oblongata, and some tasks on the left. Pause here, see if you can match up the tasks with the part of the brain. So. Breathing, we have the medulla oblongata. Threading a needle would be the cerebellum. The heart rate would be controlled by the medulla oblongata. Talking to a friend and naming colors, both of these would require the use of the cerebral hemispheres. So there we have it. Studying the brain, functions of some parts of the brain and issues with treating brain and spinal cord disorders, all for LXL, GCSE Science and GCSE Biology.